We're going to continue with the uh, French Revolution here. We got, I, I talked about context and significance the last time. Uh, we talked about long-term causes, and uh, we talked about the shorter-term causes. Uh, so let's talk about um, the revolution itself. We're going to go through a couple of steps here, uh, a series of events that kick this thing into action. Uh, we'll talk about um, the Declaration of the Rights of Man, and we'll talk about the wars of the French Revolution uh, just in general terms. And we'll talk about the, uh, the execution of King Louis and uh, his wife, uh, Marie Antoinette, which many of you probably have heard of. So the revolution begins, it's July 1788, uh, a month before the uh, king's authority collapses. Um, uh, a hailstorm uh, sweeps across uh, northern France and destroys much of the, uh, the ripening harvest. So again, uh, we have these financial issues and now we have weather uh, contributing. Uh, this disaster leads to higher bread prices. Uh, uh, less demand, more unemployment, uh, the threat of famine. Uh, the winter of 88-89 is unusually cold and it freezes the rivers. Uh, this immobilizes the, uh, the mills who, that use water for power. It immobilizes uh, the barges, the transports on the rivers. The rivers are frozen, we can't use them to move food uh, uh, from where it might be plentiful to where it is needed. And then, of course, uh, everything that freezes is going to thaw eventually. So in the spring, we have um, uh, massive flooding uh, throughout northern France. So we have a figurative political storm joined by a literal weather storm. The Estates General meet. Uh, we, we talked about this briefly in our last lecture. Um, a pamphlet emerged in the streets of Paris. Uh, called What is the Third Estate? Uh, apparently everybody in Paris read this. Um, uh, on the front page, uh, quote, what it has been until now in the public order? Nothing. Uh, what does the Third Estate want to be? Something. Again, the Third Estate's not simply comprised of illiterate farmers anymore. There are people here who are educated and illiterate and, and have rising aspirations, both economically and politically. Uh, grievances, aspirations, these are articulated in what amounts to sort of a mass public opinion poll there in Paris. On June 17th, the National Assembly decreed the cancellation and then the reauthorization of all taxes. Think about that. Why in the world would the National Assembly do something so contradictory? They cancel and then reinstate taxes on the same day. Uh, symbolically, this is uh, of, of, of huge importance. Uh, they have just declared, the National Assembly has just demonstrated who has the power in France. Uh, having canceled the ta taxes and then reinstated them demonstrates this power. Um, this, you could call this the founding act of the revolution because it shows that the power no longer resides with the king, it resides in the National Assembly. July 14th, uh, Independence Day in France, the medieval uh, fort in Paris, the Bastille, uh, a symbol of royal power, is destroyed by a, a Parisian mob uh, who, who seek the, uh, the weapons and uh, ammunition uh, stored inside the Bastille. Uh, the destruction of this fort uh, represents a sort of symbolic end of the old order. August 4th, Noble privileges are abolished. Here begins the destruction of the feudal orders. August 4th, venal offices are abolished. You can no longer sort of bribe your way into uh, noble status. August 4th, equality of taxation established. August 4th, church deprived of its tithing. You can see that the revolution is striking at the very heart of traditional uh, authority uh, in France. August 27th, the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. Uh, a remarkable document. Um, you may recall the English uh, Bill of Rights of 1789 at the end of the Glorious Revolution established rights uh, uh, for the English, but for the English only. And of course the U.S. Bill of Rights establishes uh, certain fundamental rights for American citizens. 
This uh, French declaration is meant to be universal, not simply uh, pertaining to France. Uh, it's a declaration uh, declaring liberty, uh, the right of property, the right to security, uh, the right to be, uh, to be able to resist oppression, uh, the establishment of civil uh, equality uh, in France, uh, the establishment of the rule of law, uh, freedom of conscience, freedom of expression. Now, war and regicide, side of course, the suffix, is uh, means to kill, homicide, pesticide, uh, regicide, and of course reg uh, refers to uh, the monarch or the king. War and regicide. I want you to think of France here as this revolution takes off. I want you to think of it in the eyes of the other European kingdoms uh, from France to, uh, to Austria. Think of France as suddenly being possessed by a demon and the surrounding European countries want to keep that demon contained. Or you can use another metaphor, a virus. France is sick with this revolutionary virus. Uh, the other European kingdoms do not want this virus to get out and spread to their kingdoms. So they want to quarantine it and uh, if possible to kill it before it uh, can spread and endanger the rest of Europe. So let's go through uh, this war and regicide a bit. Uh, and we're going to get in, obviously we're going to have to talk about the king and the queen here as well and the, um, their executions. Uh, Louis the Sixteenth, uh, as long as he and uh, the Queen Marie Antoinette, as long as they appeared to be uh, supportive of the revolutionary efforts, it appeared that their lives were uh, safe. Uh, their power had drained away, but um, uh, they didn't appear to be in any physical danger. But something something's going to happen here that's going to uh, change this. Um, 1791, Louis and his uh, family uh, attempted to escape France going east uh, by wagon and cart and carriage, going east with the uh, plan of uh, returning Marie Antoinette and the French fam the royal family to Austria. Of course, Marie Antoinette uh, was a, is an Austrian princess married into uh, the French royal family. And Austria, of course, is one of those countries that's seeking to contain this revolutionary virus so here it's discovered that the king and queen and their family are trying to escape and trying to escape to one of the enemy countries, one of the countries that's seeking to destroy the revolution. This is going to put their lives in jeopardy. Uh, France has declared a republic by the National Convention in 1792. Uh, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette are going to face the guillotine for betraying the revolution. Louis XVI is executed on the 20th of January, 1793, and then his wife Marie Antoinette is executed on the 16th of October, 1793. Louis on the scaffold, uh, quote, I die innocent of all the crimes laid to my charge. I pardon those who have occasioned my death. We have an eyewitness account of the king's execution. Quote, the guards seized with violence the most virtuous of kings, and dragged him under the axe of the guillotine, which with one stroke severed his head from his body. All this passed in a moment. The youngest of the guards immediately seized the head and showed it to the people as he walked around the scaffold. At first an awful silence prevailed. At length some cries of long live the republic were heard. By degrees the crowd's voices multiplied, and in less than ten minutes this cry, a thousand times repeated, before the universal shout of the multitude, and every hat was thrown into the air. Uh, at first shock, and then celebration at the death of the king. I'm going to say just a word here about the guillotine. You, you may already know this. Uh, it was created during this time as a, a method of uh, humane execution, uh, generally reserved for the elite, for the nobility. Uh, the guillotine becomes a uh, an engine or a machine of, uh, of uh, egalitarianism or equality and that the common people are going to now demand that well if the guillotine is good enough for the nobility it should be good enough for us. So if you're convicted of a capital crime and sentenced to death instead of undergoing uh, a horrendous and uh, torture and uh, painful execution 
uh, we should be allowed, the common people should be allowed uh, a quick and painless execution, just like the nobility. And presumably the guillotine is uh, quick and painless. The head is severed like that. Um, I've heard uh, ghoulish stories about the head rolling across the scaffold and the eyes blinking and the mouth moving. Uh, this sounds like something out of a horror film, though I suppose the brain still functions for a few seconds. At any rate, uh, April 1792, uh, war, uh, the wars of the French Revolution have begun. Uh, this attempt to contain uh, this contagion to France. War polarizes people inside France, uh, people who are uh, for and against. Um, war, the war here, the wars of the French Revolution are identified uh, uh, with defeat or survival of the revolution and the, re and the survival of the revolution is identified uh, with the survival of the state. Uh, so this becomes a, a life and death issue. Uh, this leads to what historians call the Great Terror. Uh, there emerges in Paris the Jacobin Party. Uh, this is a party that's uh, on the cutting edge of the revolutionary movement and will, um, and will instigate this sense of purification through uh, execution. Uh, fellow revolutionaries are now turning on one another. Uh, this reminds me almost of, uh, uh, of the Russian Revolution and uh, when Stalin begins to eliminate his enemies uh, the revolutionaries are beginning to uh, turn on one another and accuse uh, each other of not being sufficiently fervent in their support of the revolution. Out of the Jacobin party, of course, emerges Maximilien Robespierre, uh, probably the, the, one of the more famous um, uh, individuals to emerge from the revolution. Uh, these, these revolutionaries, Robespierre and the Jacobins, they have a really boundless uh, ambition uh, they create a new calendar uh, for France. You can Google this. Just look at French Revolutionary Calendar. It's quite interesting. Uh, there is a sense here that these revolutionaries led by Robespierre are completely remaking France from the bottom up. And you have to, uh, you have to sort of stand in awe of, the, uh, of just the sheer, uh, what's the word, nerve, ambition, ego of these men. They've uh, they've killed the king and queen, they've destroyed the feudal orders, they've issued the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. They have established the rule of uh, the people, so to speak. So they believe they can do anything. And um, this reign of, uh, of terror, this great terror uh, in the mid-1790s um, will end uh, with the execution of Robespierre himself. His fellow uh, revolutionaries begin to fear that Robespierre's accusations against them could lead to their execution, so they preempt it and uh, put him to death. Robespierre's execution will end this great terror, as we call it. 1795, we have a, a new Republican constitution full of checks and balances uh, with a five-man executive committee called the Directory. Um, I'm going to stop there, uh, give us a break. When we get back, we're going to introduce Napoleon, and we'll talk about the consequences of the revolution. Thank you.